it's not about a product. I, right. I may not even be able to help you, but let's find out first. Like, yeah. let's talk and let's yeah. get to know each other because otherwise, what are we doing here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, don't transact it. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the friend zone. Like, I, I do not let anybody in. <laughs> there is a no friend zone here. I am not here for you to like my vibe and to love my energy. I want to make an impact. If I don't inspire you to do the damn thing, then bye-bye. I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and welcome you to the women your mother warned you about. And do you say Brandon? Brandon. Brandon. Just like okay. the guy. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so welcome to the show today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm here in the Sales Gravy studio, which this show is sponsored by Sales Gravy and Jeb Blunt. So woo, woo, yeah, we love that. And uh, and I've got a Yuli today who is producing us. And you know what I love is that I love that Yuli's been chiming in. And Yuli, if you feel like chiming in at any point, you can, because that's the kind of show we do. Ring, ring. Cool. <laughs> so, so all the things um here we are rob uh, brandon rachel couldn't be with us today because she is actually stranded in phoenix i think she may have made it on her plane but there was some crazy outage in phoenix and um her plane got delayed so she was not back on time so you get me instead of um having the uh, the, bl- the blonde with us so we've got um the dark hair girls today How's that? I like the dark haired girls today. You and me. I'm you excited me. about that. Awesome. So as we get started, usually um, what Rachel and I say is, um, are you, do you consider yourself a woman your mother warned you about? Um, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm literally the woman she was afraid to be. So I'm doing it right. I you know? love it. The woman yeah. your mother was afraid to be. I love it. I had one yeah. of those mothers too. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to us. Yeah. And so how would you define it? How do you define that? Um define a woman your mother warned you about. Because that, there's okay. people define it in different ways. Right. So um just a woman that stepped into her shit, owned her power and took control of her future and stepped out of that victim mentality and took responsibility for where I am and where the fuck I want to go. Love that's, it. I that's love the it. the thing. I love yeah. it. And before we started recording, we started, uh, to, I, I started saying to you, I'm like, oh my God, I love your hair. Oh my God. I love your tattoos. Yeah. Oh my God. Your cleavage is awesome. And you're like, oh, cute. I could listen to this all day. Oh Yeah. And um, I just, I speak without a filter, which makes me a woman your mother warned you about. This is a podcast yeah. about sales. We are just the women your mother warned you about doing the podcast. And it, it's interesting because I, I looked at your website before we got on and I knew I could say those things to you. And I think a lot of, of women don't say those things and be like, oh my God, you're gorgeous. I'm just going to say that, right? Like to stand in that and then to support other women in that, but you're um, you're a mindset coach, so I think a women's mindset coach, which I think yeah. is a really cool thing for us to be talking about. Therefore, I wanted to give you that love empowerment. I appreciate that. It's so important. I literally, I teach my kids just to compliment women. Find something you like about someone at the register. Find something you yeah. like about our waitress. And literally, my my two youngest, my she's one three and one seven. I like your mask. I love your hair. Your dress is so pretty. Like there's always something like, yeah, I love that. Teach them. Yeah. And you have six, six kids. I know six kids. And the C-section scar to prove it. Oh my gosh. Six kids. Okay. Youngest is how old? Three. And the oldest is 19. Oh, I threw up in my mouth a little. Sorry about that. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. You like to yeah. keep busy for a lifetime. I don't know what I was thinking. Right. I was fine. Girl. Okay. So I, I have an addiction. Some people it's like heroin, right? Yeah. I was addicted to babies. Like okay. I just, I'm a natural nurturer. I gave them all the love I never had. It was just this thing. Like I had this magic little bundle and then all of a sudden, like my two oldest went to college and I want to die. I'm like, this isn't what I signed up for. Like, come back. You're not supposed to leave, right? 
Um, you don't yeah, even it was look old in games. You don't look old enough to have kids in college. Girl, I'm great with a makeup brush. Like I, you I've are. been practicing. I YouTube videos, so I just hate that shit to make me look younger. I, well, I'd love you to come do my makeup because your makeup is fabulous. Yeah. Let's do it. We're going to have to actually use the video from this um, from this episode because your makeup is so. So um, so talk to me about the YouTube videos. What what was what did you just mention that in passing? What's that about? Um, That's where I learned to do makeup. Like, okay. I, you know, what I'm saying like, yeah. I, I don't know how to do makeup. I'm anything I want to learn. I go to YouTube. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I don't have to sign up for college classes or go to something. I go to freaking YouTube. Yeah, YouTube so. is amazing, right? To learn. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just go to YouTube and figure it out. That's like the thing I go to. And I'm like, okay, That's YouTube, thing. how do we fix this problem? I, I mean, I yeah. ask, I ask YouTube everything to solve my problems. How can I make my face look skinnier? Like that, I literally Googled that once and it's contouring. I didn't know what that was, but I watched some videos and I'm like, dude, I could do this. So, yeah. Well, here's a quick funny story on, on, on YouTube videos. So, uh, about a month or so ago I was having, well, I have been slowly resisting the, uh, acceptance of my laptop, which is an apple. I've been fighting it for a very, okay. very long time. But I got it because not my an Apple other, fan. No, no, not really. Um, but I okay. got it because everyone was pushing me, specifically my boss. And the other laptop finally died. And I'm like, okay, I got no choice. It's time. I'm gonna have to use this Mac that I bought because that's all I got left, right? So right. I start um trying to put files onto it. So I had them on an external hard drive. Mm-hmm. And then apparently you have to do something funky to an external hard drive to get it. Like Yuli, Yuli's shaking his head. I wish I would. I wish I needed a Yuli then, right? So yeah, exactly. I can't get the files onto the laptop. So I YouTube it, and it tells me all of, all these things to do. And then don't forget, make sure you back it up to the desktop because um, it right. could, you could possibly wipe the drive and da, 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 right. So I do all those things. Sure enough, the drive appears to be wiped out, and I'm like, what the. <laughs> What the what? And I watched the video on how to do it. And so now I'm like having a panic attack because I was in the middle of a huge client project where I had to do 10 classes for the army. Oh, boy. And so I'm like sweating because like everything is crashing. And the 14 year old's boy, who is my boyfriend's boy, is like, did you YouTube it? I said, yeah, duh, yeah, I did YouTube it. He's like, I go and I did what the video said, know it all. And he says, did you read the reviews about the video? <laughs> Yuli's dying. It's a whole setup. I was like, read the reviews. Why do I have to read the video oh. reviews about? He's like, it's a setup. Not all the videos are good. Always <sighs> read the reviews. Don't don't buy a can of beans read without the reading the reviews. Yeah, well, I didn't exactly. know I had to read the reviews of a video that was telling you how. To, anyway, I'll never. Anyway, he just wanted to have, fun, and then he fixed it for me. Nice. Then the fourteen year old came in and fixed it. So anyway, I digress. Um, talking about YouTube, let's talk about you have <laughs> you have a really great voice. Uh, like you have like the thanks. perfect podcast voice, but like you, I mean, it's kind of hot. I'm like, wow, her voice is like really attractive. Oh, like, yeah. you like, don't even, you probably don't even have to really work to have people listen. They just want to hear your voice. Like, it's amazing. Well, it's that's, just saying. Th well, thank you. And it's interesting because of the kind of work you do, this might kind of um, segue into this. Several years ago, I had worked with a coach who sh she was very much into this marketing alignment grid. Okay. And, I kind of got certified in it, but I didn't really use it. I just went through it because it was about finding what was the best way to market yourself based on who you are, your personality, style, and type. And so when I went through that process, um, how I was classified was as a truth guide. Like at the time I was doing a lot of, I mean, I do a lot of coaching now, but I was coaching, I was coaching a lot of women um, professionally in their jobs as entrepreneurs. But if, as you know, there's a lot of mindset coaching yes. that goes on. So as a sales coach, 
half of the time I'm doing mindset with them, right? And just like kind of kicking them in the butt. So I go through this marketing alignment thing and I'm, I'm considered a truth guide who basically is the type of coach that will lead you there. Um, but I'm not going to be a guru coach who tells you do it like this because it worked for me because what works for me does not work for you. Right. So go through that whole thing. And what, how it turned out was the types of things I should be doing is that this is what was pointing out the types of things that you should do, be doing marketing wise based on your personality. Mine broke down into anything related to my voice. <laughs> that's great. Isn't that crazy? It's strong. It comes through so strong. So yeah, that's, yeah, it was, I'm going to blame my own intuition on that. I called it. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> and it supports it. it. It supports it. So yeah. that actually mm-hmm. when, when I went through that and I, I started out in radio in college, I realized I'm like, Oh, all right. Then I, uh, that's when, that's when the first podcast started was, was based on that of how to be right. in alignment with what's going to attract people to you. Right. So yeah. tell me about, tell me about what you are doing as far as a, a coaching women in mindset. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, so before I started writing books, I was in network marketing and just kind of like taking notes. It was, I wanted to do enough to get a stay home with my kids and that was it. So the rest of the time I'm just kind of observing, you know, getting my residual income, all the things. And I realized, um, in all my networking, the women that I was meeting, these were like top income earners in other companies, like they weren't happy. And I'm thinking everybody at the bottom wants everything you have and they think they're going to be happy. Yeah. There's a huge gap missing. Like what's the disconnect? So, um, I actually coached for an entire year without charging. I didn't know. I didn't know better. Yeah. So I was going through this and I think it was perfect how it all worked out. Um, just talking to them to realize that we're all chasing the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. And we're looking for that outside thing to just define us, to make us feel like we're successful, to make us feel special. Mm -hmm. Like we're looking for that paycheck, that rank, that everything outside of us. And so I finally went ahead and launched the big girl business after book number four was out, I'm like, okay, it's time to do big girl business. And that shifted everything. I realized that mindset fucks everybody up every step of the way, Mm -hmm. no matter what it is, whether, you know, I coach business women and you said 50% of the time it's mindset. I'm probably about 70%. Yeah. Really it's 70% mindset. We just have to get the fuck out of our own way. Yeah. And that's not easy just to decide to do on your own. So, well, good for you that, you know, you say you did the coaching for a year for free and this is interesting because you work as a mindset coach. It's easier sometimes to coach others than yourself, right? Because you, you, you kind of grimaced a little bit at, oh, I know I did it for free for a year, you know, like almost apologizing for it in a way. To myself still. To yourself. I'm still like, oh my God, you just gave all this power away. And like, yeah, really well, just to me for not owning my shit so long ago. Well, here's, here's why, here's how I want to prop you up with that. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I, I think we have, we can't regret the types of things that we do because we learn from them. Yeah. Right. So, so you did yeah. that for a year for free, but probably in that process is where you realized you were good at it. Exactly. Right. So a hundred percent, you would have probably struggled more. I know in the beginning when I started coaching years and years ago, I struggled in the beginning of like the the imposter syndrome part of it. Like, you know, what makes me good enough to be a coach Yeah, and what, what makes you good enough over time or makes is the pursuit of mastery, right? The better you get at it, the more hours you put into it, the, the more situations you run into that you can, coach people around based on things you've learned, you know, you put that, you put that time in and someone had said to me years ago, you know, um, do the things that you love, do the things that you would be willing to do for free. Now we don't want to do that forever because we're good at it and we should get paid for it. Right. You should choose to do the things that you have such a passion for. I guess that's my attitude. I'm like, when I retire, would I still do that for free? Right. Yeah. Right. When I don't need the money. Yeah. So, um, 
That was just my little thing to you to like, don't apologize to yourself for that. No, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I, I am grateful for it. I, you know, it's one of those things I, it's easier to coach other people than to right. exactly. see yourself in that mirror reflection of like, I tell everyone all the time, there's no such thing as a mistake. There's a lesson or a blessing. Exactly. Learn the lesson, get the blessing, move on. And yeah. That's it. But Oh, I'm so sad that Rachel's not here with us because uh, <laughs> last week we did an episode called I think it airs this week. I can't, I'm, I'm not sure what day it is today. It's called, um, win or learn. Oh, win like or learn. That. that's, and it's kind of a very seriously toned episode of, you know, things we've been feeling like we've been failing at and did oh, we yeah. really fail or did we learn? So, um, along those lines, let's talk a little bit about your, your book. So I'm looking at your website oh. once yeah. upon a time, bitches. Uh-huh. The Dream Big Bitches Vision Book, the Dream Big uh, Bitches Weekly Goal Setting Journal. So mm-hmm. let's let's talk about this. You're very distinct with your brand, right? And to me, unapologetic, which is a lot about what our show is: stand in who you are and yes. attract who you want. Like some people might get yes. offended by "Once Upon a Time, Bitches," and others are like, "Yeah, you." Uh-huh. So give me a little bit of backstory on this. Um. It really, backstory, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> it started with 10 years of rejection. A lot okay. of fuck knows. And I was like, okay, okay, let's, okay. Z- let's Let's zone in on that because we're talking about selling and sales. And it's it's all about rejection mm-hmm. and no's. Exactly. Right? So go. That, that's where it starts. Like no was the entire journey to yes. And I feel like a, my publishers alone, right? She, My publisher is actually the author of Go For No. Um, which is a very powerful tool if you are in sales um, because it teaches you like it's no is never no. It's just a not right now. It's the journey to yes. It's all the things. It's it's the experience. It's the joy. It's the, all the stuff in the middle. So yeah, 10 years of rejection, um, a divorce because of my writing. I was given an ultimatum. That's in my first book. What? Ta-da! Oh, what, yes. What, what, what? Girl, <laughs> girl, we might need to just schedule like another whole show all together no, for that. Where, where are you but, in New uh, York? Maybe I just need to get on a plane. Yes. We Michigan, talk all cold, day. You know. So then you come here. You go, okay. Anyway, continue, continue. Um, so I love to write. That was my thing. I wanted to write. I was going to be a writer since I was a kid and queried agent after agent after agent. Nothing ever worked out. Um, and this was like fiction writing. Okay. So I was doing fiction. I was like obsessed with it. Kind of, I got divorced and with four kids, a new relationship, adding two new kids to the mix, I, the writing got put on the back burner. Um, but I was working network marketing and, and this has been, network marketing is like a godsend for me. It, it has been so many lessons in everything I've needed in this life of just like personal growth, all the things. So I'm, I'm doing this thing and I'm like, man, I want to help women because I'm working next to people that are wishing and hoping and praying that something good will happen for their business. But what's the truth here? Like, no one's going to come save you. You have to save yourself. And then I'm like, oh my God, I need to write. I just need to write nonfiction. So um, I went to an event and I saw this guy speaking on stage that I'd read his books. I knew he was an author. So I got the courage to go ask him who his publisher was face to face. And he's like, oh my God, I'll introduce you no big deal to him. Right. I'm like dying. And just, should I go talk to this guy? I'm so whatever, you know, um, he's famous, but, uh, (laughs) yeah. So he introduced me to them. And the funny thing is like, I said, I want to write this book. That's kind of like once upon a time, bitches. That's exactly what I told her. Once upon a time, bitches. I gave her the idea, the premise of what I wanted, um, of how I want to empower women to save themselves, to stop waiting for the hero. Like clearly, the prince in Cinderella is not the fucking hero, no. right? If she didn't right. go to the ball, like nothing would have happened. She, she did the thing. She yeah. showed up where she needed to be. Yeah. So, um, but he gets called the hero. So yeah, I'm like, you got to become the hero of your own story. Like there's no one's going to come save you. No one's going to come work your business. No one's going to check in on you and make sure you did your shit today. No one's going to make sure you, you know, whatever. And she's like, I'm, you know, it wasn't a good fit. <laughs> it was a no, another rejection. I was like, okay. So it's been 10 years, all these no's. I just kind of felt like at that point, is this that point where you chase something for so long that you have to decide, like, maybe this is the universe telling me to move on to something different. Like, maybe I'm not meant to be a writer. 
Um, so I had that thought for a couple of days and then I got a phone call. She's like, I talked to my husband about this and we've been thinking about it all week and we want a two book contract. I went from like getting one book published to a two book contract to we just published book number five. And who is this that published you? Yeah. Um, success in 100 pages. Okay. I think that's, is that, um, who's Andrea who, Waltz? That's what I thought. That's what I uh-huh. thought. I wanted yep. you to say it before mm-hmm. I said it. And Richard mm-hmm. Benson, they're so amazing. They are. Like, they're so amazing. And she's been on our just, show. Uh, she's actually yeah. been on this show. Well, she's been on our show here recorded, but she has also been on our show at Outbound on stage when we, we did a oh, lot. Li- wow. We did a live version of the show at Outbound. Um, they're amazing. They're and I so remember great. being backstage with her and she's like, I want to introduce you to someone who needs to be on your show. <gasps> oh my gosh. She's cool? fabulous. Yeah. yeah cool? I love her for the connections. I've met incredible people because of them. And literally like I owe so much to them for just taking on my vision and understanding like they knew who I was and what, like what I wanted to say. And there was no, they didn't try to change me. They weren't like, Brandon, we can't do this. Like people are going to freak out. It was like, fuck yes, 100%. Don't dim your light. And they they have just embraced the brand so beautiful with everything, cover designs, all the things. That's awesome. I think that's a really great um, learning when it comes to the nose and keeping, I, I just wrapped up a keynote presentation before, um, I walked into this podcast and one of the things I talked about, we were talking about prospecting and being persistent. And one of the stories I told was about a client that I basically pursued for 12 years that I never got on board with me to, um, you know, let me train his company. And it yeah. took me actually leaving my own company to go to sales gravy. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, let's work together. Right, like 12 years later. Yeah. That's and, how it happens. But you have to, but you have to be persistent and consistent, right? To keep pushing mm-hmm. through. And I know that um, if Rachel were here, she'd be having a field day with me and a book and a book that I'm supposed to yeah. write that hasn't happened. Do it. Girl, just do it. Just I set know. a timer five minutes a day. Just do it. I know. I know. Do it. Um, but the thing about that persistence that you're talking about that I think is really important people understand is like not persistent with the person. Okay. Persistent with you. Persistent ooh. with your actions. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. if I'm constantly persisting someone's inbox for 12 years, like that's not the persistence that's going to draw the attract. Like I'm all about attraction. Yeah attraction. I just want to yeah. draw people to me. So as long as I'm persistent in what I want to do, like for myself, that just draws people. So it's not necessarily like keep hitting up your friends and family to join your biz, homie. Like yeah. it's just be persistent and like keep doing the things, do yeah. the things. Yeah. Well, you, you were in that network marketing for quite some time. So, um, yeah, you've seen it, right. Cause that, oh, yeah. what you just said kind of triggered me. It's like, Come on, you're like, we have these products are good, Gina. You could love them. <laughs> you could sell them too. I'm like, I'm good. Oh but my you gosh. would you would do so good at the, I'm like, stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. They're all mm-hmm. following the same, like, get your friends to yeah. buy your mm-hmm. stuff and then get in your downline and your upline and your sideline. And what a hustle. Bro, I respect it though. I respect I do. it. I learned so much from it. I still collect the paycheck. I still collect yeah. the residual paycheck. I'm I, like, it's great. I, I love it. I, and I'm happy it's that you great. started working with them because I just think they don't get yeah. the support that they should be getting from a sales training perspective. Oh my gosh. There's such a bad reputation because so many people take it off the rails. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, you know, it, it really does not, the way I market my, you know, my coaching business is very similar in how I I used myself for network marketing, Mm -hmm. right? It's, this is a relationship industry, right? It's not about a product. I I may not even be able to help you, but let's find out first. Like let's talk and let's get to know each other. Cause otherwise, what are we doing here? Yeah, You know what I mean? So don't transact it. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the friend zone. Like I I do not let anybody in. (laughs) There's a no friend zone here. I am not here for you to like my vibe and to love my energy. I want to make an impact. 
if I don't inspire you to do the damn thing, then bye bye. Yeah. Like out of my space. I'm not, I'm not here to make you feel good for five minutes and then go back yeah. to Netflix and chill for the rest of yeah, your life. I'm the same. I'm the same way as a coach. And, I love and, that. and in general, I'm also the new phrase I came up with one day is um, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. Exactly. Is that bad? That offends people. Yuli, that, is that I, bad, I, Yuli? I say that. Yuli, <laughs> I, I want to know. know if you think that's bad. I know. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm here to make money, not friends. Right? Yeah. It's, all, it's all about it's all about the Benjamins, isn't it? If you help me make money, yeah. we can be friends, but... Ooh, yes. Ooh. Hey. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. A little referral business right there. Exactly. So what else are you doing? Um, you're coaching. You're doing some social media stuff. Tell me about what else you're doing. Yeah. So like I said, book number five just came out. So I'm I'm in promotion mode. A book yeah. is like having... Do you have babies? No. Do you have kids? No. Okay, girl, you, then you're going to know what it's like when you write a book. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. Um, it's like that. Like uh, I, my publishers warned me, they were like, Brandon, it's, it's not what you think. Cause what do we think? Like our idea is that, you know, I have this great book idea. Some big publishing company is going to give me a million dollars and then I'm just going to sell all the books and people are going to love it. It's like a whole fucking process. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so I just gave birth to the baby. We got fuck luck bitches. It just came out. And so just setting myself up and, that promotion thing of like, I want the world to know I had a baby. And when you have a baby, you do, you want everybody to know you're like, Oh my God, I just had a kid. Oh my God, look, my baby's so perfect. And then you just have to keep talking about your kid. So it's, it's pretty, it's a crazy experience. And here's some words from our sponsor, Jeb Blunt at sales gravy. Hi, this is Jeb Blunt. There's a reason why thousands of sales professionals and top companies across the globe hone their sales skills at SalesGrave University. You see, SalesGrave University is different than most learning platforms. First, we have live courses taught in a virtual classroom by our master trainers that start almost every single day. And our e-learning platform is populated with hundreds of hours of sales training content produced by some of the top sales trainers in the world, including Gina's spontaneous selling course, which is worth checking out. Now, I've got some good news. If you've never taken a course on Sales Gravy University, if you're a new user, you can take your very first course for free. That's any course on the platform, absolutely free. Just go to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com or click the e-learning tab in the top menu at salesgravy.com. Pick out your course. And when you check out, use coupon code free course to get that course for free. That is free course to get your very first course for free. It's it's interesting the whole process because I've I've stopped and started a number of times and similar yeah. stories to yours where um someone introduced me to this happened a couple of times where I've been introduced to a couple of different publishers and then um I would give my outline and they'd like, Nope, I'm not interested, right? You I would get the nose. And yeah. then the other thing that was really interesting to learn was well, you just don't have a big enough marketing platform. We don't do oh, any marketing. You have to do the marketing. And I'm like, what's your job? You're taking all the money yeah. for the book and all the things. So what what are you people doing? Right. So that was kind of a frustration in itself of like, you have to build that platform yeah. in order to get the publisher to look at you. So what yeah. is some advice that you can give, which I think would be very transferable advice in, to sales in general? What's some of the advice that you can give as far as like marketing yourself? Um, I know that you've done some social media mastery classes. What's your mm-hmm. advice on that? Because obviously you've had to get good at it to promote your books. Right. And and there's no such thing as like good and done, right? This is a growth game and it, it doesn't ever stop. Um kind of like how it is with coaching people, right? Like you, you teach them the things and then it's something that they take forever and just continue to grow. Like nobody ever just gets to one level. Um, so I've been very fortunate because my publishers like have helped with that. And, and I want to say, first of all, it kind of is it's bullshit. If you want to believe that you have to have a platform to be able to get published and all the things that can be your truth, but it doesn't have to be. Mm. I, I'm a nobody. <laughs> I wasn't nobody. Um, 
didn't have the huge platform. And in fact, it's the opposite. Like we are, we set this up so that fuck luck bitches actually pushes, you know, my first book out even more. Right. Mm -hmm. Because people are like, oh my God, she has five books. So then they look at, you know, the recent one, they're like, okay, I have to go back to read it. Um, And if you read one of my books, you're going to read them all. That's they're addicting. So now I, um, now I need them. You, oh my God, you're, you will love them. They are, they are fabulous. I'm very fucking proud. Um, (laughs) (laughs) very proud. And I will toot my own horn all day because if I'm not excited and proud, like nobody else is going to be excited and proud for me. Exactly. So, um, get the books, like they're fast reads. They're like airplane size travel. You take it, you go like, they're just perfect. Um, but I'm not afraid to be new on any given day. So I'm juggling a lot of hats. Um, just, you know, the mom hat, the coach hat, the business hat, and now like the marketing hat of like promoting my book, self-promotion. And it really is just a commitment to myself to just keep showing up, show up and give people a landing space to know, you know, when they see my name, like who the fuck is Brandon Lynette or to see me and be like, okay, I need to know who you are. Um, just, embracing that I am the brand. Mm -hmm. I am the prize. (laughs) I am the money. I'm all the things. So, um, my advice is don't think that there's a set of rules to follow. You don't have to get ready to get ready. You don't have to, you know, have all the things to do all the things, you know? And I have coaches now that, that I work with, like that are coaching other people that are like, Oh my God, I have to get a book. They feel the sudden pressure. Yeah. I'm like a book doesn't, do shit for your coaching. Like it's not. Yeah. You don't yeah, have that's, to. That's, that's an interesting point because this, this comes up a lot. Like Rachel gives me a hard time all the time. She's like, just do it already. Just do it already. And I'm like, I don't feel the sense of urgency for doing it. However, this is the interesting aha. Uh-huh. It's it's other people saying, if you wrote a book, I would really like, please write books. So it's about about yes. your audience wants the information. They want the and information. And that's where I came from. Exactly. Like, I know that not everybody's going to like it because I have bitches on the cover. People aren't even going to read it right. because I have tattoos. People aren't going to read yeah. it. You know what I mean? And I know those aren't my people. Right. But I'm also reaching people that otherwise wouldn't read shit like this. Right? Like, people can't relate to Mel Robbins. Some right. people really had it fucking rough. Some people just, yeah. I'm like the, just a whole different arena than like the Brene Browns and, yeah. and the Mel Robbins. What's, and, the, what's the girl? Wash your face girl. What is that? Wash your face. Go to bed. What's you her put name? Me on the, I can't I can re- picture her face. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Um, oh, why am I blanking? You know who I'm talking about. Yes. Right. Wash your face, girl. Something like that. Yeah. But even if you look at what the hell is her name now, that's going to bother me. Um, If you look at even the cover of her book, she's sitting on the cover, right? She, she fits a whole different profile too. Like, yeah, I'm going to reach other people, other people that would not necessarily be drawn to this right? because you know, they made different choices. Maybe, you know, they cuss a lot. They have the tattoos or whatever it is. I just feel like I'm there for my people. And, and the books have been so loved and they've made such an impact that it's something I'm going to continue to do. It's awesome. Well, coaching is not always the easiest gig, right? It is, it is, no. um, it is hours for dollars. It can yep. be exhausting. Um, it can be hard to scale. So how do you, how do you do it? And do you have any advice around it for, for scaling a business? Um, scaling the business. Yes. I learned because of my coach that um, when I first started charging, it wasn't a lot. And all of a sudden everybody could work with Brandon and I was overwhelmed. And I'm like, there's no way I could coach, you know, 20 people a week. I can't do it. So honestly, the scaling went through um, price changes. <laughs> it's yeah. all about like, I weed people out immediately with that price. And some people are yeah. like, this is ridiculous. But the truth is there's power in that transaction. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm worth. I yeah. like, you know, I probably could even charge more. Right. But I this is the audience I want to reach right now. So yeah. I think scaling, if you need to scale, it's all in the price. Yeah. It's definitely the price. So now there's only two ways to work with me. Um, I have a limitless rebellion class now. 
Um, it's an eight week course, or I have two options for one on one. And that's either a six week class or 12 weeks of one on one. So I've limited it down where I know that this is how many people I can handle on my yeah. docket yeah. and still, you know, and be still sane. Be, so be comfortable, make a decent living, manage yeah. six, six children. <laughs> Yes. And exactly. uh, I, I love your website says you're a divorce survivor. Yes. I mean, that is a uh, that is a great phrase. I think anyone yeah. who's been through a divorce, I mean, there are different levels of it for sure. I know when yeah. I was going through a divorce, the thing that I hated the most is when, I, well, in my divorce, I'm like, all right, your, yeah. di your divorce is not my divorce. Exactly. I've, no two are the same. And no. I'm still... I'm 10, 10 or 11 years. I think it's been, he's still like, it's day one. It's really bizarre. Yeah. I'm just like, we have babies. We have babies. Let's move on. Let's grow up. Yeah. Let's do the thing. But yeah. no, like I'm saying like so much anger and hurt and frustration. And I'm just like, man, I thought that we could be friends now <laughs> for the babies. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of hate. And and the truth is, it really came down to like, he said, I was getting success in my fiction writing. I, I got picked up um, from a company in Chicago. They're like, can you come read at this library event that we have? And he was like, you're not going, you're not going. Like he's very jealous, very, you know, all the things. And one day I'm like, I, I love writing. That's what I want to do. He's like, you could be a writer. You could be married to me. And after you devote so long, like I was a stay at home mom, took care of the kids all day, did the things, barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> I'm like, this is my one thing. It's the one thing I don't want to let go of. Right. I, I don't have friends. I don't have an outside thing. Like this was the thing I wanted. So it kind of, it's been such a blessing. It all worked out. I'm grateful for the ultimatum. I did the thing. I showed my kids that your dreams matter. You don't give up anything, especially yourself. I'd already given up everything. And just yeah. that that's what, finally took the scales in my favor of figuring out who the fuck I am yeah. stepping into my shit. It's like, that was going to be the last thing that was taken from me. I would not exist anymore. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think a lot of women yeah. go through uh, the things that go, and men too, I'm not discounting for men either. I know a lot of men yeah. have gone through, you know, divorce is hard, but it, 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 it plays, it impacts you so much psychologically yeah. and emotionally and then impacts and affects your business. And if yep. you're in sales, it affects your sales. Like it affects everything to go through that draining experience. Yep. I don't recommend it, but if it's necessary, <laughs> girl, girl, right, but, do it. But, but you were having this success and the only way for you, and that was some of the advice I got along the way. They're like, you are never going to go to the next level in no. your career. If you stay in that relationship that doesn't mm -hmm. support you prospering, right? You, you right. want the people around you, whether it's a partner or a friend or whoever you want those people to support actually support you. Doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not to say like, I don't want your listeners to like think, Oh my gosh. So I have a little resistance with my husband. I have to divorce him. Like that. The little resistance is not the problem. You guys, I'm talking yeah. like really toxic. Like I want to you know, crush your dreams and make you feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. Not someone that genuinely is like, okay, starting a business is scary. If, if people don't tell you you're a little crazy or give you some kind of yeah. warning, they probably don't care about you because it is crazy. Yeah. Like, oh my God, that's kind of scary. Yeah. Okay. That's normal stuff. That's normal yeah. stuff for them to be like, okay, is this really working? Like all the things, but, um, it's, you know, if they're trying to crush your dreams and diminish who you are as a person in yeah. that experience, yeah. like, oh my God, who are you to be a coach? Like <laughs> you're not good enough your shit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I, whatever. I, you know, I picked up on the toxic and, and our listeners, um, they're your people for the most part. You know, if there's some people who are not, then it doesn't really matter. Um, right. I could pick up on it. You're talking about a toxic situation. Like you said, yeah. crushing your dreams. There's, um, there's a difference with people who are like, Oh my gosh, that's scary. You're going to be okay. That's different. Uh, yeah. That is just people who are fearful and stuck in status quo. Cause it's safer. It's safer to be yes. in status quo and not make, changes and they have um genuine interest about making sure you know that you're going to be okay and right. um and then there's some people that don't want you to be successful because then it makes them feel less than if they see yep. you be successful so there's 
yeah. all the all the things. And sometimes it's a small percentage of us who are the, um, you know, high performers, high achievers. We're in a very small like group sometimes where we're alone because we do all the extra crazy things where people are like, yep. I'm going to punch out at five o'clock and everything. I, yeah. I don't know what that is. I love the balance in my house. Cause my husband now um, we've been together for however long I've been divorced. Um, the, he like keeps me grounded. Right. Cause I'm not, I want to do everything. Like I want to do all the things. How much can I sign up for? And then he kind of <laughs> anchors me back. And it's like, okay, he is that nine to fiver. Yeah. And I just feel like the balance is so perfect for me. Mm-hmm. Like, otherwise I, I'd probably be in a mental institution thinking, I don't even know what, but he, he definitely keeps me grounded. So I want you guys to know there is hope. There yeah. are good guys out there, Yeah, but you have to be good to yourself to be able to attract that. You have to be very confident in who the fuck you are to know that this is the this is the level of love I'm accepting. It's the level of love you give yourself because no one can come into your life and love you less than you love yourself. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. That's a fact. I'm, I'm yeah. with you on all of that, um, on all of those things, on the confidence, on the like know what you want, on the there are good guys out there because I've got one as yeah. well who is amazing. Same thing, balances me, um, yes. knows when to rein me in because like I'm a wild child and he's... Girl. Like we're, we're like soul sisters. Mm-hmm. We're connected in that level then. Cause I could just see him like hanging on. Like I, you know, my husband has to do to me just to hang on and pull me back. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> I mean, pull the fuck down. <laughs> over the summer, um, I had a dog that a rescue dog that got away and it's, she, she didn't make it. It's, I, I don't want to go oh, into a sad no. story about it, but I, I was actually at sales gravy when it happened and I was in the middle of training and he actually called, texted me and said, call me. And I called him and he's a police officer. So he's like very um, stoic, stoic and like just the facts, ma'am kind of thing. Like, yes. hey, hey, babe. Um, yeah, they found Tanner. Um, I, I, oh. I did the things I, I, I just made decisions for you. I hope it's OK. I took her to the and like I was like becoming numb. I'm like, what are you telling me? Oh. Right. And so he, he yeah. did everything to take care of it. Right. Which was awesome. Oh. And then I'm like, can we get a puppy? He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, no, no. I'm like, but come on. I'm like, the other dog needs a puppy. He's like, no, she doesn't. Yep. She doesn't need a puppy. She needs oh. to be on her own in her final years because she's 14. I'm yeah. like, but I want a puppy. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and see, there, this is the lesson for you is that it is better to say you're sorry than it is to ask for permission so you bring home the puppy and like honey i'm sorry well the the, the, po- so the, sorry. the real no the real positive going back to what you're saying is like knowing yourself yeah right knowing who you are setting yep. boundaries around that um i like that he reins me in because yes. i probably shouldn't have gotten that rescue dog in the first place which i got to replace another dog that had passed naturally yep. the year prior and I had a knee jerk reaction and he's like, you need, we need to pull you back in so you can think about this yep. properly, which I appreciated, right? You need that. Absolutely. You need that kind of balance. So kind of my point of the story, whether it's a relation, any kind of relationship, right? In business, yeah. your relationships should be, you want to attract the right people to you. Mm-hmm. You want to work with people that are a good fit for you. You can't mm-hmm. do any of that if you don't know yourself and who you are. I know as a coach, I'm sure you feel the same way that there's only certain types of personalities that I can and will coach. Yes. Right? Or who oh, I want such to, lessons. Yeah. Yes. Of who I want to work <laughs> with. But you cannot get to any of those things until you know yourself well. And the yeah. same thing with whatever you're selling, right? So we're always selling yeah. ourselves, but whatever product or service you're selling, you need to know that product and service really well. Yes. Then to figure out who's the right audience and the right yeah. fit and then have the right message to go after that. Right. Yeah. Eventually, maybe you can help me with this. I do want to write. Yeah. I do want to write a book about, I don't want to give it away because Yuli might steal it, but I want to write a book about <laughs> dating in the eyes of, of selling and objections and messaging, like all the things that you would learn in sales. Yes. 
How do we use that in dating? Including like, you know, uh, proposing on the first date or pre-cum right. ejaculation. Like, right. dude, you just came all over my page and I, I don't even know if I wanted to have sex with you. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All the things. Yeah. You, you should see Yuli's face right now. But but he's dying. I'm sorry. But, but uh, <laughs> all of that, like when I was rewriting yeah. my profile because I was like so fed up. Um, I'm like, is this like, is this what it is about? So I rewrote my profile, which was a great learning in messaging and marketing. Yeah. So it started out with have your shit together and be confident yes. and be able to handle a confident woman. Mm-hmm. Only one person responded. <laughs> <laughs> that is so perfect. I'm going to put that shit on my Facebook page, right? Like have your shit together, be a confident woman or don't message me. Take it. Take it and, yeah. and tag me in it. So that's what I put out there. The one person who responds, I'm keeping him forever. <laughs> Do it. Put a ring on it. So, I love that. <laughs> so he's like, all right. So I read your profile. <laughs> Got to tell you, kind of scared the shit out of me. Then yes. I asked myself, do I have my shit together? Yep. Pretty sure I got my shit together and she's pretty. And that, that was it. Do it. I love it. Marketing and messaging. Marketing yeah. and messaging. This is going to be a fabulous book and I want to read it. Okay, like good. I already want to read it. So okay. I think, I think Yuli wants to co-write it with me because he seemed like kind of yeah. on board. He was shaking his head about, about the dating is like sales um, book. Before we get yeah. uh, wrapped up with a couple other questions for you. Um, First things first, tell our audience where they can connect with you, um, find you, all the things. Where where are the best places to do that? Yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Probably, I mean, Facebook Messenger is where I live. Like okay. I live there. Okay, cool. Um, I will have you can to go to my uh, website. You yeah, you can okay. go to my website too at Um, There's a email list there that I'm pretty good at keeping up with so uh, you'll know all the news anyway any any exciting updates in my life you'll know there but um yeah facebook is the place and then all my books are on amazon so okay cool that is awesome uh, okay a couple other yeah. questions Con- signature questions rachel would be asking right now um okay. what is oh what is your definition of sexy sexy oh confidence mm-hmm. confidence is so hot And I think just owning your feminine energy, like just being able to know that you're a fucking badass and you're still like, you have that soft feminine energy is just, that's hot too. Like I'm very attracted to myself. I (laughs) I know. I'm kind of attracted to you. Yeah. I kind of, you're hot. You're hot. (laughs) I'm going to ask, I'm, you know what? Yuli. Yuli, how do you yeah, putting him on the spot? He's gonna kill me. I wish I could see Yuli's face. I know I, I wish feel like I'm at a face. disadvantage. I, I'm gonna take a picture and send it to you. Yuli, how okay. do you define sexy? You mean like what what does it mean to be sexy or what I consider sexy? What you consider That's sexy. That's the same thing, isn't yeah. it? How, what how, what do you consider sexy? Women who do understand you define nuance. <sighs> what does that mean? Hello. Can you get a little Tell us in that. I was, I'm being mean. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I was actually taking a dig at you guys because I just introduced the nuance and you guys are like, that's the same thing. And I was like, no, it's not. All right. You want to try again and give us no, a that, real that answer? A, that is a real answer, though. Say it again. A woman who can understand nuance. A woman who can understand I'm a very, this sounds like, uh, uh, Brenda's going to roll her eyes. I, I, I am very... <laughs> C- just because you said I'm not, cer- I'm, I'm a cerebral just person. Said I'm, not sexy. I'm a cerebral person. I'm very analytical, <laughs> and I do enjoy, you know, waxing philosophical. And okay. it's, uh, you know, I I can I I can interact and you know get along with women who, who it's not their thing. But you know, if you really want to, you know, find the, your way to my heart, then you can talk to me about very nuanced topics. Oh. I like that. I like that word. I like yeah. that. That that's awesome, Yuli. Thank You're you. Welcome. Intelligence is sexy. Yeah. Into, yeah. I, yeah. Well, and every, well, everyone, here's the thing. Everybody's intelligent. We have different types of intelligence. I disagree. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I highly disagree with that. Wait a second. Back some up. people are not intelligent. There might be some people. I, yeah. I, I think I, I, I think, not agree. Yeah, I think his point is like there's different 
types of levels, levels. of, right? Yeah. And we don't all have the same interest. Yeah, yeah in. exactly. Yeah. Okay. I like that, Yuli. Thank welcome. you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I just want to put him on the spot. Okay. So best advice you've ever been given? Oh, get the fuck over yourself. Gary V. Yeah. I love him. I love Gary V. I don't know. The 14 year old me. got me into his YouTube show, Trash Talk. Oh, I've not seen that. Uh, he literally goes out to like all these yard sales and then resells things. And he's really big into mugs. Now we got this whole thing. Oh, hashtag wow. Mug life. So I'm always looking for mugs now. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I know it's crazy. I'm like, let me find a mug for 25 cents and sell it on eBay for $10 and I can retire. Oh, it's 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 crazy. Well, I grew up working in flea markets. My dad made me work in a flea market as a kid. So maybe that is the attraction to that show. Um, Worst advice you've ever been given. Oh, worst advice I've ever been given. It's a new question I've just introduced to the show. Yeah. Um, God, that stopped me in my tracks. What right. is the worst advice I've ever been given? I know for me. Not to try new things. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, don't do the scary shit. Yeah. Like, it's like the naysayers, right? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you get that, the, 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 that advice and then like you might have taken it and then it took you down a completely different path. I, um, I had a business coach who... <sighs> I think I almost had to have therapy because of it. She literally said to me one day, I was in one program, I up level to the next program, right? You know how that works. Yeah. I go into the next coaching program that was like a shitload of money, like $30,000 a year, like insane. Right. But that's where I was building my business. So it made, you know, it was, it made sense. And so I up leveled because I'd done so I'd grown my business so much at the first level, right? So in that level, you get a, 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 a one-on-one coach with all this other stuff, right? So I said, well, I'm, I have a very specific ask on the coach. I want this coach over that coach, which has actually shaped me because now that I oversee our coaching program, I learned so much from that scenario. So the guru of the company mm-hmm. says, no, we're going to give you the other coach. And I'm like, I don't, I don't resonate with the other coach. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to be comfortable with that. And she's like, well, she's going to be good for you because she's going to put you in your place. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Right. okay. And I'm like, okay. Um, and then she continues. She's like, cause you have either a tendency to try to be funny or you're a bitch. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, nice. Okay. I'm like, um, I don't know if you recall, but at that time, I'm like, COVID took me down. But for 12 years, I owned an improv comedy club. I'm like, well, you do know I'm a comedian, right? Comedian. Like, that's part of what I do. So, no, well, comedians are comedians because they're insecure. Oof. Yeah, like, she just, like, kept chopping me down. And then at one point, she goes... And um, I don't know why you're trying to take this angle as a sales coach. You're not a sales coach. Yeah. Uh, She just kept chopping me down, chopping me. She's like, those are the coaches that give the industry a bad reputation. Those are the guru (laughs) coaches. Yeah. Those are the guru coaches. She's like, you're not a sales coach. This person over here, she's a sales coach because she used to work at IBM and this and this and this. And so she created this picture of what a sales coach could be and totally derailed me. And I bought into it. And for years, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not a sales coach. Okay, I'm going to follow the path. And lo and behold, I'm a fucking sales coach. Yeah. (laughs) One of the top training companies in the world, right? So, if not the, it's it's, when you listen to that shit, that bullshit, that that bad advice, Mm -hmm. because you're feeling less than or insecure with yourself, you, you got it. This is my advice to, to, to anyone listening. Check yourself. Like, yeah. Are you taking the advice because you're not confident? Go get a second, third, fourth opinion. Yeah. My very first coach um, told me not to become a coach until I hit the top rank of a company in network marketing. 
she was like, you need to build your business before you can build your coaching business. And that was our last meeting. So people will try, people will try to hold you back. And what a lot of people had said Mm -hmm. to me in that situation was that that person was jealous, was concerned that I was going to grow fast. She felt your power. Yeah. So anyway, um, I right, thank you so much. This has been great having you here. I feel like you may be back to this show, and I definitely know that we're going to be talking we're more talk. for yeah, sure. For sure. So thank you so much for being here today, uh, Warners. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Women Your Mother Warns You About, sponsored by Sales Gravy. And thank you to Yuli for chiming in today as my producer and adding a little extra vibe uh-huh. to the show unexpectedly. <gasps> If you love this episode, do us a favor, go out, share it on all the socials, uh, especially if you are a woman like Brandon and myself and Rachel, go share that out. If you haven't given the show a rating and a review, do that as well. You can find out more about us at women, your mother warned you about uh, dot com women, your mother warned you about dot com. That's right. And um, hey, earners are learners. If you have not checked out salesgravy.university, Go check that out. I've got a couple courses coming up, um, Selling With Stories and my um, What to Say When You Don't Know What to Say and a bunch of other awesome courses to help you generate more sales. We're out of here, Warners. Bye, everybody. This really will get serious soon. Yeah, don't. it, It doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious.